Let's take some time and talk about isoclines. Isoclines are a uh, representation of behavior within models, and they can be a very helpful um, graphic that you can extract from a model to understand how they work. Now, let's, um, we're going to use isoclines in models that have more than one species. And let's go to our simplest two species model, which is predator prey interactions. So if you recall our system of equations, we've got one for the prey. This is denoted by V for victims. It's got the growth rate of the victims minus the number that are eaten by predators. Predators are P, and this parameter here is the efficiency rate. The predator dynamics are linked, and um, they're born at some rate that's proportionate to the number of reproductive individuals and the number of prey. Got Daddy, those mixed up. Now? You want to do some drawing? Yeah. Minus uh, the death rate of the predator. So you need to do that. All right, so we've got our victims. We're going to denote our victims here on the x axis, and we're going to denote our predators here on the y axis. You want to give us an isocline? Uh oh. Here, try it this one. And what we're doing here, you're accustomed to having time on one of the axes, but it's not, um, but we're not going to do it this way. There you go. Um, thank you. Let me just store that right there. But what's going to happen here is time for each uh, of these individuals is going to be in the XY space. Um, bear with me, stick with it. That's not going to be intuitive right off the bat but you are going to have a tool by the time I'm done, hopefully, ideally, or what our goal here is to, is to give you a tool for understanding how the system of linked interactions works. How is your isocline? That's an odd isocline, but we'll, we'll, give, we'll put another one on here. Now, what an isocline is, it's uh, the point where, po where population growth, all right, we, we need it. It's the point where population growth is equal to zero. So this is um, a kind of equilibrium where the population size of one of these actors, one or both actors, the predators and the prey, are zero. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what, and, and it's a helpful place to, to know because it tells us where the populations are increasing, decreasing, or staying the same. And, um, of course, that, that is of great interest to us because uh, if we're trying to increase a population, then we want to know where it's going to go, where the population will be positive. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw an ice line. I'm going to draw it for the, for the prey here, for the victims. And it's just a straight up and down line. Pretty simple. Right here, all along this line, this is what this is representing. All along the line, this line, the growth rate um, is equal to, to zero. So dn, or I should say dv, dt, the change in the prey population per unit time is, is zero. There's no growth. Where are you trying to go? Where are you trying to go? You want it? Are you up? Yeah. Okay. Um, the population growth rate is zero here. And, um, so what is greater than zero? Answer, positive. What is less than zero? Answer, negative. OK, what are we going to draw? Isoclines. Yeah. Let's see. Isoclines. Isoclines. That's right. We love isoclines. Above this, the isocline is zero population growth. Above it, the population growth is positive, And below it, the population growth is negative. So let's just draw some arrows on here to show us how things are changing. Of course, I've made a mistake here. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll um, point it out in just a second. I have dra drawn the isocline, not for victims, because the victim population here increases from zero here into something greater than zero here. I've actually drawn the isocline for predators. And um, predators, which would be zero here, and then increase to some positive number. But the isocline works the same way for the predators, even though I 
previously identified the wrong one. The growth rate for, uh, for the predators is zero at this point, and it's positive above that and, and negative below it. And how could that be? How can we represent it as a, as a function of the victims? Well, look at our system of equations. Predators are completely dependent on their prey. Their whole population is linked to the dynamics of the prey. Therefore, whether their population growth is positive or negative depends on how many things they have to eat. Okay, so I've reset our space here so that I can draw this correctly this time. I'm going to draw the isocline for the prey, its horizontal line, and this is where D, um, the change in the victims, the prey population, is equal to zero. Now, what's happening here, again, this is the number of prey that are available. And what's going to happen here is above, in this case, above this isocline, the population dynamics of the prey are negative. Now, why does that happen? That's because predators are eating them. So predators have a negative effect on the prey population, the, being, the, the prey are being eaten there. Um, but in the case when predators are scarce, we revert back to exponential growth. In this case, the way we've done this, and so the victim populations, the prey population increases. All right, so we've got these two, we've got, we end, what we end up with actually are four sectors of what we would call sort of phase space where um, we have each the prey or, or the, uh, or the, or the uh, predators are increasing or decreasing. So what's going to happen here is when we're above the size decline here, we have positive um, changes in predator, uh, or we have, uh, excuse me, we're, we're above this isocline, so we have negative um, effects and negative changes, and below the isocline for, for um, our prey, so we have negative population growth of the prey, and we have negative population growth of the predators. So everybody is decreasing here. Um, but once we get below this isocline here for the prey, they start to become positive, even though the um, isocline for the predators is still negative. Okay, moving on. Now what's going to happen is that we're going to get above the isocline for, um, for our, our, our uh, prey here. They're going to start, or we're going to be above the isocline for both. Don't drop your baby while you're teaching. They're both going to increase here until we get above the isocline for the, the prey again, meaning that the predators are so abundant that they start to decline. So what will happen, at least in this model, right? And remember, a model is an abstraction of reality. What happens within this model is that uh, it's linked and it will have these cyclic uh, population dynamics. All right, let's get real now. And by real, I mean like real. All right, now we're going to go back to something that's a little bit more familiar. We're going to put time here on the x-axis and ask um, how do these things look over time. And now we're going to get real. We're going to add um, animals or uh, uh, organisms to this. And let's start with an herbivore. Um, we got our zebra. We got our zebra car, and this is going to be number of individuals. And if our zebra cars follow this um, population dynamic without any predators, they will be in an exponential growth. But what happens out in the wild when we have a predator? Right? We've got a predator. We have the zebra, and we've got the predator. Zebra car, and we got the predator of the zebra car, which is this kind of alligator car. Uh, anyway, what will happen is the alligator cars, this predator, will start to consume zebra, and their population increases. Now, once the predator drives the uh, zebra population below their isocline, their uh, population numbers will start to drop. Now, if you recall the different phases um, that we just went through, there's one where predator populations are still increasing uh, while 
the zebra uh, car populations are decreasing. So we have this, what ends up happening, that, that causes a lagged effect where you have the um, peak in the victim population happens before the peak in the predator population. And uh, as I mentioned, these are cyclic, so they will go on and they will be slightly lagged, at least in the model and sometimes in real systems.